<laughs> hey, this is Cassie with IK Network Solutions, and we have brought on some guys from Fortinet. We've got Jeff and Brett. Um, if you guys could uh, walk us through what you're going to show us today. You bet. Thanks for having us, Cassie. Uh, grateful for a chance to chat with you about Fortinet and what we do and how we do it. My name is Jeff Champeau. I'm an account manager with Fortinet and also with me is Brett. He's an engineer. And we're going to talk a little bit, uh, just just a minute or two about Fortinet as a company and, and kind of how we came to be and, and what business we're in. And then we'll talk about uh, SD branch. So how to control infrastructure and security um, together and how to do it simply and efficiently and, and cost effectively. So that's what we're going to uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yay! It sounds like a good time. All right, I have just a few things to show. Just a little bit of show and tell here. So, um, who is Fortinet? Um, most people know us as a firewall company. Um, that's how we got our start. We're pretty good at firewalls. Um, and Gartner and NSS Labs seem to think so too. Um, fundamentally, we're a security company. Um, as a company, we've um, been around for 20 years, um, have good, strong financials, no debt. We're an engineering company, too. We have uh, 680 patents, which is um, 3x our nearest uh, competitor, um, 465,000 plus customers. We actually have shipped more firewalls in our 20 years than any other firewall vendor. So it's how we got our starts, what most people know us as. But we do a lot more than that. Um, we also do uh, infrastructure. Like I said, we'll talk about SD branch, zero trust network access, things like NAC and client and uh, two-factor authentication. Um, we do cloud security. We do AI-driven security operations. So um, things like EDR for ransomware protection, AI for... Um, detecting advanced threats, SOAR for, secu for uh, security orchestration, and Sandbox, of course. Um, and then we, we give you an easy way to manage it um, with, our, with our security fabric. So the fabric not only allows you to manage and integrate Fortinet products, uh, but also allows you to bring in um, over 300 other vendors' products and share security intelligence. So, like I mentioned, we'll, we'll spend some time today on SD Branch, and I'll turn it over to Brett here in just a second. But first of all, uh, what is SD Branch? Um, Gartner, our friends at Gartner, defined it as, or actually it, not really defined it, but they, there's a blog post um, written by a guy named Andrew Lamar, who says, um, SD Branch products allow multiple branch network functions to be managed as a single construct. So, and, and he kind of breaks it down into four things. He says SD branch products must support um, four network functions, um, WAN gateway, wired switching, wireless, and firewall. And um, they, must be, they must be managed together in a unified configuration and give you centralized policy reporting, visibility, and automation. And there must be a zero touch configuration for initial provisioning component. So it has to be easy to deploy. Um, and there's also an API component to it. So if you have other tools um, that, that you want to integrate into your environment and use for visibility or reporting or things like that, there needs to be an API. So that's what, uh, that's what, SD, that's what Gartner says SD branch means. Um, some people might think the SD refers to, or, or for some folks, they might say the SD means uh, software driven um, or, or software defined. In our case, Fortinet's a security company. So for us, that means uh, security driven because just because if it isn't secure, you've got a problem. Um, and, um, and those are the problems we're here to solve. So with that, I will turn it over to Brett and, um, show you what SD branch looks like. Fantastic, thank you. you bet. So I'm gonna share my screen and to start off with on our discussion, I'm going to show a diagram of what we'll be looking at today. And to start off with on this, um, we have a pretty typical setup of, of what you'll normally see in, in most 
uh, branch offices or even in small data centers. We'll have uh, two internet providers typically, in this case mine. Uh, for a long time I've had fiber internet and cable internet. And then I have a Forti gate, a switch, and a few APs and then things that hang off of that. So that could be um, you know, desktops, uh, typical Wi-Fi devices, IoT, uh, really quite a wide range. Now, what's really nice with what we have with the SD branch setup is that in addition to setting up just a one single location, I can also tie these together through the Fortinet security fabric. So if I have a data center and then multiple branch offices that connect back to via, via, via VPN, and I still wanna see uh, security information or even just network status information, I can easily see it in a topology view as you grow out the network. So, and switch gears a little bit. We'll take a look first off at how we do our switch management. Uh, a key differentiator for us is that uh, when you're adding switches in, you no longer have to, if you're managing it through the FortiGate, you no longer have to go individually manage each switch. It's now managed uh, effectively almost like a virtual line card within the FortiGate itself. And what I mean by that is, if we look at our managed port of switches here, I have a single switch that's connected. And of course, I can look here and see different uh, groupings or even a topology view graphically if I have multiple switches. I'll see where these switches are, how these are connected together, and then we all manage this through a uh, CapLab protocol that we call Fortilink uh, for doing that automatic configuration, discovery, and uh, updates, things of that sort. Now, when I mentioned earlier the uh, port configurations, if we're manually managing ports, for network VLANs, for instance, uh, we can just simply look through the FortiGate interface on that firewall and then see every single switch that's connected or managed through it. So in this case, since I only have one switch, we only see that one switch here, but I can now go in here and then I can add VLANs in. So for instance, here I have my wireless access points. I like to put those on a dedicated management VLAN for their cap connection. But then if I wanted to tag other ports in there, it's pretty simple to do that. I just go in, find the port I want to change, add in any tagged VLANs or even change the native un untagged VLAN. And if I want to take this a step further, we have in 40 OS 6.4, a new feature for doing some basic network access control. So, uh, so effectively NAC would allow you to do uh, automated provisioning of those ports. Somebody comes into an office, they say, hey, I bought a new HP printer, I want to plug it up. They no longer have to call IT to have somebody provision a port, they just plug it up to the port. And then we can go through here and we can begin to do some profiling automatically on the FortiGate to say, hey, this is a printer. We want it to go on the printer VLAN, or hey, maybe this is a Roku or Apple TV. We don't want those on the internal network. We want to put those maybe on a uh, unprivileged guest VLAN of some kind. So we have a lot of capabilities built in that help not only secure the uh, typical infrastructure, but also streamline and simplify the daily management to, to give the admins more time back in their day without having to go hunt down uh, a lot of different point places to manage things. Now, not in addition to the, the switching, we can also do Wi-Fi management. So um, if you have a Forti AP, you can easily plug that up just like the switch and then manage it through the FortiGate as well, which not only does that give you a simplification on the management, it also gives you the ability to see security data all the way down to the endpoint. So you can now see end to end from the ingress on the internet connection all the way down to an individual client that's connected up to a Wi-Fi uh, station name. And as an example of that, I have four different APs here in my office right now. I have uh, actually in the house. So I have one in my office, one in the hallway, one in the living room. Uh, and then I have, and here I actually manage, manually manage my SSIDs for each one of these, but I can even go through and just set these to uh, categorize it out based on uh, tunnel mode SSIDs or uh, bridge mode if I want to bridge it directly to a VLAN there at the local office. And then in addition to that, I can even go in and I can see on my clients, I can see who's connected, I can see uh, what their signal strength is and uh, how long they've been associated. Um, and if I have a monitor mode on here, I can even go in and I can start to see on certain APs uh, potentially what other devices uh, maybe out broadcasting a, an SSID that we don't want to have out there. Um, so in this case, I have a spectrum analysis that I can do on here to look at things. I can do VLAN probes. Um, you know, a lot of different things that 
you would normally have to go to multiple different consoles, multiple vendor products to be able to, to, to get that kind of a, a visibility. So and it looks stop super, here. I mean, like it's super, I mean, it's pretty on top of, I, I don't know. I think it, it makes it a little bit easier to manage if you, if it's easy to look at and it's easy to maneuver. So, and it looks right. super easy to maneuver. Yeah, it, it certainly is. Uh, out of the box um, with one of these um, configurations in SD branch, I can have this set up in about, you know, probably about 30 minutes to an hour for uh, an average deployment. Uh, the, the configuration is all done in a single interface. It's all through uh, a single CLI with Forta OS as well. If you wanted to uh, automate out with scripting or use Forta Manager to push automated configurations down. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a night and day difference from the way things were even just five years ago. <laughs> and that 30 minutes to an hour could be, um, could be done remotely. So you could ship a Forta gate out to an office where there's no IT staff at all and um, walk somebody through plugging the cables in and then do this part remotely. So that, that also is a, a big time saver, big money saver. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and when you start to get into uh, office deployments where maybe you have to roll out 20, 50, 100 offices at one time in a very short period, and you don't wanna have to deal with manually configuring and staging equipment and then reshipping it to a remote office, we can also do zero touch provisioning in conjunction with Forta Manager so that you could build this whole configuration template for how an office should look within Forta Manager. Somebody then goes out like a smart hands field technician, plugs it up to an internet connection, it dials home to the Forta Cloud. Forta Cloud says, hey, you need to go talk to your Forta Manager and here's the information to go connect to it. And then from there, it'll auto automatically pull its configuration down and do all of this for you so that you don't even need to have somebody who's specialized within Fortinet configuration methods to, to be able to deploy it, which then takes that 30 minutes to an hour I mentioned previously and significantly shrinks that uh, on a, a magnitude scale. So I'm gonna step through uh, a provisioning process as well here on the, the Wi-Fi side, just to show how simple that is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new VLAN and then set up some access rules and then show how that maps back to a Wi-Fi connection. So uh, it's pretty simple for us to do here. So as I mentioned earlier, we manage everything through a Forta link interface. And on this Forta link interface, uh, that in network terms would be something like an 802.3 uh, lag, uh, like an LACP aggregate. Uh, we have a hardware switch option as well for uh, our small branch office models so that this can also just be a hardware switch as well. Uh, and then from there, I just have VLANs that are tagged and created on that. So I'm gonna create a VLAN on here and I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna say it's Wi-Fi inside. So this would be like maybe a you know, typical trusted network for, for uh, LAN access in an office. And uh, pretty typical for, for uh, other setup on here give it an IP address, we set what kind of security permissions we want it to have. And then uh, once that's in place, then we are basically good to go. Um, and if there's anything else that I wanted to set up on here, maybe if this was a privileged VLAN, I can also add in things like uh, admin access or network monitoring access, and then set other security parameters that I may want on a network. Maybe I want to have DHCP snooping so that somebody can't put a rogue DHCP server out there, or maybe it's, something that I want to be akin to an access VLAN or like a private VLAN where uh, maybe it's workstations. I don't want them to be able to talk to each other. And we can block that not only at the AP level on the SSID itself, but we can also block it very easily here for the switch. No command line configuration required for that. And then everything else is uh, pretty well straightforward like you would uh, set up on a, a typical network. Now, once I have this VLAN created, it'll be attached to this portal link interface here. And see here, we now have Wi-Fi inside. Then my next step here would be to create a security rule and then add that VLAN in as a, an option for an SSID. So uh, on this part here, uh, I'm just as an example, I'm not gonna create a security rule just yet. Um, I will walk through what that looks like because uh, one thing I have found is that Fortinet's security rules are actually very, very easy to follow and very straightforward to set up. So yeah, as just an example on this, 
I not only can I set the security rule here, but I can also set my NAT parameters as well for outbound access. So if I wanted to map this to a, NAT, a particular NAT pool of public IPs, or if I wanted to do anything NAT specific, I don't have to go to a different console to it. Then I can also set all my DNS filters, maybe an IPS filter, um, antivirus, things like that sort. All right, so uh, once the security rule is in place, we can go create an SSID for this new network we created. And in this, um, on the SSIDs as well, one interesting thing to, to note as well is that we, we actually support two different methods on our APs for, for network access. One of those would be uh, CapWAP tunnel, which is pretty standard in uh, most enterprise network Wi-Fi deployments, where all that traffic is tunneled back to a central data center or a central Wi-Fi controller. Uh, for us, we just tunnel it back to the local FortiGate. Uh, the other option there is maybe if you have a, a legacy network, multi-vendor Wi-Fi, uh, can't cap up, tunnel everything back to uh, across multiple vendors to a single vendor's uh, device or, or controller just due to differences between manufacturers. So we also support using VLAN tagging so that we can drop an SSID down to a network on the wired side um, as uh, just a regular VLAN tag. So I'm going to call this one, I'm going to give it a name. I'll just call it just like I did on the, uh, uh, on the VLAN interface we created. I'm going to call it Wi-Fi inside. And then I give it some information here. I'm going to use a pre-shared key. Although uh, if this were an enterprise deployment, of course, uh, you could do WPA enterprise as well. I tell it what VLAN I want to tag it to. And then if I want to prevent those wireless connections from talking to each other, I don't have to go anywhere else to set that. I can actually just set it right here on the SSID itself. And actually one interesting thing as well, the note, note on this is that if you're using personal keys, like a WPA2 personal in this case, uh, I can also use multiple keys on this as well if I wanted to do uh, individual mapping. So in this case, you see, if I wanted to put in multiple keys, maybe for a small office where everybody has the key and maybe this has been the same key for 10 years and we're not able to put in WPA Enterprise just yet, uh, due to, you know, the external authentication dependencies that may be in place. Well, we can give individual keys, maybe for, uh, for instance, a uh, front reception, uh, warehouse, uh, office or financial staff and people that may be mapped back to different networks for different reasons. And they all see the same security or the same station name, uh, and they have a key they plug up. And as far as they're concerned, it all just works. Yeah. But if, have, if somebody gets let go or something happens, you can kind of trace back to that, that key that's that person and get rid of that key or figure out who was doing what, right? Right, exactly. And if we tie this back with WPA2 enterprise uh, connectivity, back to like a central authentication like Active Directory, Azure AD, uh, any, anything like that that's pretty, pretty typical on a, a most networks. Uh, we can also tag that back using the username so that um, instead of seeing just an IP address or a device name, we can actually see what users logged in on that device and correlate that data so that you can now do identity based security policies. So I can at that point add in security groups into your firewall rules rather than having to use subnets or interfaces nice. or, or other things that don't personally identify uh, a user or a device on the network that, that you would want to, uh, to control access for, or maybe even just uh, you know, maybe log certain sensitive data transactions that may be happening. All right, so I'm gonna switch this back to single since that's what we'll create. And as you can see, I can create multiple SSIDs on here and uh, I can then map these back to different APs. I can map these uh, as a group to an AP. So if I wanted to, in this case, maybe I have a certain models, I wanna have them configured a certain way. They wanna have, I wanna have certain radio settings on them. I wanna have, maybe certain power settings, or maybe in certain areas, I want to have a dedicated monitor or, or something that's broadcasting just certain IDs. For instance, going back to that use case I mentioned earlier, if you have a warehouse, maybe you want to put a certain segment out that's a different VLAN setting for the warehouse network than maybe in the, the back office network. Uh, so it's pretty easy for us to do all that right here. Um, and I'm going to add this into an AP that's over here near me. And as you can see, we have a lot of options on how we can configure in here, but uh, nothing that's really exotic. Uh, you know, if we wanted to do handoffs so that somebody could walk around a network or walk around the office and go AP to AP without dropping their connection, we support uh, things like 802.11R and, and you know, roaming capabilities. 
And I'm going to add this into my network here. Um, as you can see, I've got this set already to manual, but if I wanted to bridge all the bridged SSIDs, it's pretty simple. Click there, and then if I save this, then every single bridge mode Wi Fi network I create will automatically be available on that access point or that particular model of access points anywhere in my network. And if I take that a step further, uh, interesting side note on this as well is uh, maybe if maybe you don't want to manage APs using the local office FortiGate. Maybe you want to manage all those centrally. Well, you can also manage these uh, APs through the data center. So you see all these logically in one single location for everywhere in the enterprise network without having to have uh, everything tunneled back to the data center. Because we can still drop these back to VLANs. And once I have that in place, I can click on my managed port APs. And then when this refreshes, we'll see on here that that network Wi-Fi inside, since I've manually set it, is now available on the access point that's in my hallway. So pretty simple. Yeah, it seems really simple. I need some extra APs around my house. <laughs> All the stream that goes on. Yeah, that was, and this is extremely simple. I mean, I'm a salesperson and I get it, so. <laughs> Compare it to the process. If, if you were manage your, managing your security with one platform, your switches with a second platform and your wireless with a third, um, you know, what we just did and what Brett just did in a couple minutes would take, well, it would take at least three times as long because you'd be logging into three different platforms to, to define things. Yeah. Awesome. It's a compelling mm -hmm. story for sure. I mean, like, it, I mean, I've, I'm already bought in, but um, it, I just think that this is a really great compelling story and I haven't seen it done like this before. So um, on top of already being bought in, then being able to see this demo that I've not seen, I think that it's, uh, it, it tells a great story. Yeah. And it scales very well too. Um, we, we looked at just a small example, but whether you've got five sites or 50 or 500 or 5,000, um, we've got customers with 20, 15, 20, 25,000 sites that yeah. need to centrally manage. So it scales from, from uh, just a handful all the way up to many, many. It's awesome. Yeah. And here's a little, little bit of land yet for this as well is uh, this is a, is a very flexible uh, AP configuration that we can do. Uh, let's say that you have a bunch of uh, people in different offices that uh, now have to work from home due to COVID. And that means that Me. you're now reliant. Yeah. You're now reliant on their home internet, on their home router, all of those other things that you, you can't secure because you don't have access as the IT guy to employee X's Linksys router. Well, how do we get around that? Well, we can take one of these APs and we can configure it with just a few command line settings or even do it through FortiCloud so that it can dynamically create an IPsec encrypted tunnel back to the data center and then broadcast your Wi-Fi network there in the employee's house. All they have to do is plug it up to their internet connection and suddenly they're on the corporate network. And you now have that, that visibility that we've described here now extended to every single remote office worker who's working from home who has a Ford AP sitting in their house. That's awesome. That's awesome. I don't know what all John can see from mine, but uh, my our engineer can probably see a lot. I don't know what all he's got on my laptop. And I'm like, I can't even look at YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like I need to be on YouTube. But anyway, that's outside of when I'm trying to set up these events to do the YouTube, I have to do it on my regular computer because this computer won't let me do it. I'm not allowed to touch YouTube. And the the beauty of, of what Brett just described is creating that separation. So obviously an employer doesn't want to get in the way of their family, of, of, of one of their employees' families being able to watch YouTube and play Xbox and do whatever they do on their home network. Um, so taking an AP home and, and making that tunnel gives you good separation. It's brilliant. I think it's great. Yeah. And we didn't even touch on things like SD-WAN, all the other things you can do with this SD branch. Maybe we can get into that and, and NAC. Um, we can do NAC policies. These these would be great uh, 
topics for future videos. Awesome. I love this. Um, this educational series is super um, important, I think, to really get out some of these types of things for the people that are in our market and even people just on YouTube checking it out. So I really, really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to come in and do this. One, it helps me learn and grow and learn more um, more about Fortinet and you guys in general. And then it's also helping the clients in my market get a better view, you know, without having to stop everybody and say, I need a demo right now. This gives them a chance to go look in their own time. So this is awesome. I appreciate it. We do yeah. too. We definitely appreciate your partnership and the opportunity to come chat with you today. Awesome. Well, um, if that is it, um, I want to just, uh, really say thank you again. Um, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we were looking for in this educational series. And I am excited to have you guys back. I may do them more often just because everybody seems really excited about doing this and, and they're really great. So we're happy to happy to come back if you have us. Oh, absolutely. Well, I hope you guys have a great weekend. It's, uh, it's Friday today, so we'll uh, don't have too many beers this weekend, guys. <laughs> we'll try not to. All right. Thanks, Thanks Cassie. You.